What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've got something a little special for you today. What I've got here is a tool that I've built out of necessity for my own workflow. And I think a lot of you will probably relate to this. And what it ultimately comes down to is a better alternative to the DaVinci built-in film look LUTs. Most importantly, the 2383 LUT that's very commonly used. And what a print LUT does is basically just emulate how your footage would look if you were to print it on Kodak 2383 film. Now, if you're using Resolve, you've already actually got access to some free 2383 print LUTs as well as a few others. And I'll show you where to access those right here. You can either right click on a node and go to LUT and then you'll see film looks and you're gonna find them all right here. And you can also access them in the LUTs gallery over here on the top left. They're gonna be in the film looks folder. And the most commonly used one is this Kodak 2383 D60. So what I'm gonna do here is show you how to use the 2383 film LUT in Resolve. And then I'm also gonna show you what issues you may face when using it based on your workflow. And then I'm also gonna show you how the product I'm providing you for free is gonna solve those issues. So first up, how do we bring this LUT into Resolve? Well, to properly incorporate it into our workflow, you have to understand that LUTs are not aware of what kind of color space we're working in. The film LUTs provided by Resolve are expecting a Cineon film log input, and they're gonna output to Rec. 709. So right off the bat, that limits us a little bit based on where we can place it in the node tree. And there's some extra steps we have to take to make sure that that LUT gets the proper input so we can get the proper output. So to demonstrate that, let's take a look at this node tree here. What I've done here is built uh, two nodes, both containing a color space transform the first one is taking our red wide gamut log 3G10 footage and then outputting it to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then the second node over here, which is gonna be our output CST, that's taking DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate and outputting it to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. If we disable both of these, we're just gonna be looking at our log footage from that red Komodo. So here's where the issue comes into play. If we're gonna be including that 2383 D60 look, we need to use a color space transform to set that output gamma to Cineon Film Log. So we can do that right here. Cineon film log, and then we can add a new node downstream of that Cineon film log conversion. And that's where we can use this Rec. 709 Kodak 2383 D60 LUT. So now we're looking at a proper Rec. 709 image with that 2383 film LUT applied. Now for most of you, this isn't gonna be the first time you've seen the necessity to convert your footage to Cineon Film Log before applying that film LUT, but you might not have heard of some of the drawbacks using this workflow. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you four reasons I don't like using this workflow. The first of these is that if we wanted to make any changes after the LUT, we're now working in a display referred workflow, which in simple terms is just an inferior way to working to a scene referred workflow. And so the difference there is display referred means we're only operating on the RGB data that our pixels on our screen are able to present to us. So we've actually got a lot less room to play around with the colors in our scene. So working after this film LUT is gonna be working display referred. And by after, I mean anything downstream. So any nodes that come after this film LUT, that's all gonna be display referred because this film LUT is converting our footage to Rec. 709. So that means all the nodes following are Rec. 709. And then even just using the primaries wheels here, all the tools are gonna to feel different and they're gonna function differently because you're working display referred. However, if we reset this node, and then if we add a node prior, to our output transform. Well, now we're back to working in a scene referred workflow. So if I make the changes with the primaries here, I'm gonna get a much more consistent and pleasing output because I'm working underneath my output transform. So node four here being underneath this DaVinci wide gamut to Rec. 709 transform, which is ultimately what's taking place with these two nodes. Working underneath that is giving me access to the whole DaVinci wide gamut color space, which is much larger than Rec. 709. And I wanna stay working in that color space anytime I can. If we use this method of converting the footage from DaVinci wide gamut to Rec. 709 Cineon film log, that means we're really kind of limited in making changes post LUT. Now that may or may not mean too much to you. If it doesn't, that's okay. I just prefer to work in a scene referred workflow and using this method is kind of restrictive and doesn't allow me to do that in the way I'd like to. Now the second drawback is kind of just bred out of laziness and that's just that if you wanted to use that film LUT, you're gonna have to go through that extra step of adding a color space transform prior to the LUT just to convert the footage into that Cineon film log gamma. Now I'm not saying this adds a whole lot of time, but it's just one more step that if if we could remove it and still end up at the same outcome, I would prefer that workflow over this one. Now, the third issue with this workflow is that if I've applied that film LUT and I decide that that look is just a little bit too strong and I wanted to reduce its intensity, I can't go to that film LUT node and then go to the node key output 
and turn it to 0.5. I can't turn down the intensity of that look because built into this LUT is actually its own color space transform, taking Cineon Film Log, which is a log color space, and converting that to Rec. 709. So by reducing the intensity of that film LUT to 0.5, you're also reducing the color space transform properties built into the LUT by 50%. So you're stuck having to use the full intensity of this LUT, and it gives you less creative freedom. And then the fourth reason I don't like to use this workflow is the difficulties you'll face if you're working at a project level color management. And so what that looks like is if you go into your project settings into your color management right here, we're currently not using any color management at the project level. We're doing it in our node tree here, but some projects I like to use DaVinci YRGB color manage and let resolve handle all of that for me, or I can use ACES CCT. And so once again, we're back at square one where this film LUT doesn't really easily fall into any place in that node tree. We're gonna have to build additional color space transforms just to get that resolve LUT to work. And even then you're still probably gonna find issues because that's converting that footage to Rec. 7 or 9. It's got its own color space transform built into the LUT. And then Resolve is also doing its own color space transforms at the project level that you don't even see in the node tree. So it just convolutes things even more. And again, it's just not ideal. It's too many steps, too many moving parts. So I wanted to build a version of this LUT that gives the same look, but it fits into a color managed workflow much easier. So that's what I did. And I'm gonna show you how to use that right now. So if you click that first link in the description, it's gonna take you to a webpage where you can download these LUTs for free. They'll be in your inbox in a matter of seconds and you can start working with them immediately. And the way they work, I'll go ahead and delete this method and we're gonna go ahead and take this DaVinci wide gamut to Rec. 709 and we don't even have to worry about the Cineon film log output gamut anymore. We can just leave this at Rec. 709 gamma 2.4 and then we can continue working using a scene referred workflow. We're gonna go shift S to add a node prior to this color space transform right here and we're gonna name this one 2383. Now, currently this node is working in DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. That's the color space this node is functioning in. And so in our LUTs folder, whenever you download that file, you're gonna get three additional folders, one for ACES CCT, one for RE Log C3, and then one for DaVinci Wide Gamut. Those are basically just three intermediate color spaces that I recommend working in. My favorite is probably DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, but it does depend on the project. The reason I like DaVinci Wide Gamut is actually larger than RE Wide Gamut 3 and ACES AP1. So I'll be using DaVinci Wide Gamut for this tutorial, but I did build these LUTs to suit all three of those options. So since we're working in DaVinci Wide Gamut in this project, we're just gonna go into the DaVinci Wide Gamut folder, and then we're gonna choose the D60 version, which is the daylight balance version. There's also D55, which is slightly warmer, and D65, which is slightly cooler. So we wanna go with that more neutral option, so DaVinci Wide Gamut 2383 D60. Let's drag it right here, and then immediately we get the same result of using that 2383 LUT in the past methods because it actually is built on the original film look from Resolve. So you're getting the same LUT, you just get to place it wherever you want to now, and it's actually taking DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, applying that 2383 LUT, but it also outputs to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, so it keeps the same color space through and through. Now, if you wanted to use the ACES version, that's gonna input ACES CCT and then output ACES CCT. And the RE Log C3 version is gonna input RE Log C3 and output RE Log C3. So whichever color space you're using, it's gonna remain consistent through and through. And here's some of the ways that solves those problems we talked about earlier. First off is that we don't have to put this node anywhere in particular in the node tree, as long as it's still in between that sandwich of input and output transforms we built. So now if you wanna work after the 2383 LUT, we can do that and we're still working scene referred. Another thing that solves is that that we can go into our key output and now we can actually turn down the intensity of the LUT without actually affecting the color space transform properties that were built into the original version. So this version wins in that respect too. And the third and final way I think this LUT is superior to the one Resolve provides uh, natively is that we can actually delete our color space transforms. We're gonna leave that LUT right there. We'll go ahead and turn its intensity back to one. And you'll notice right now it doesn't look very good because we're just looking at our red log footage. But now we're actually able to use our color management at the project level. So we can set our color science to DaVinci YRGB color managed. Keep in mind, you could also use ACES if you wanted to. We're gonna turn off automatic color management. We're gonna set this to custom. Input color space. We're gonna go with red wide gamut log 3G10. That's what it was shot on. Timeline color space. We'll set this to DaVinci wide gamut intermediate. Output color space. We're gonna set this to Rec. 709 2.4. Input DRT, none, and then hit save. And just like that, we've now got the 2383 LUT from Resolve functioning entirely on its own without having to use any color space transforms. And then we're also able to use it at a project level color managed workflow. And you can use this LUT at any point in your node tree. If you wanna do it at the clip level, you're free to do that there. You can also use groups, apply it at the group level or at the timeline level. And it's still gonna work the same because it's no longer requiring you to convert the color space to Cineon Film Log before you apply it. 
and the LUT no longer converts it from Cineon Film Log to Rec. 7 or 9. Depending on which LUT you select in these three folders over here, it's going to expect ASUS CCT, RE Log C3, or DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate, and it's going to output the same thing. Now for me, this opens up a lot of possibilities in my workflow. It lets me continue to use the beloved 2383 LUT that's provided by Resolve. It just gives me more flexibility into where and how I choose to incorporate that 2383 LUT into my workflow. So if you're interested in checking out these LUTs, click that first link in the description. They can be yours for free. I'm not going to charge you anything. I'll send them your way in just a matter of seconds. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.